and minds as we prepare for worship by listening to our prelude, Advent Joy. Wonderful. 
Then I invite you to rise as you're able as we begin with the order of confession and forgiveness of sins as found on page 95. Thank you. 
that anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. Your prophets spoke of a day when the desert would blossom and waters would break forth in the wilderness. Bless us as we light the candles on this wreath. Strengthen our hearts as we prepare for the coming of the Lord. May he give us water to all who thirst, for he is our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is from Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall rise up above the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who are... The all who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our portions, O Lord, but the water portions of the earth. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who bow weeping and bearing seed will come again to joy, shouldering their sheaves. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians. <clears throat> Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in our circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel. <laughs> Glory to you, O Lord. There 
was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Christ. Please be seated. So if you notice on our Advent wreath, one candle is not like the other. This is not because we ran out of blue candles and thought, eh, pink's close enough, no one's going to notice. Um, of course, today is Gaudete Sunday, Joy Sunday. Uh, Gaudete refers to the first word of the Latin thing that they sing, it's a whole thing. Um, but regardless, today is the Sunday that in the middle of this time that is about preparation and repenting, we remember that this is actually a joyful thing. We remember that God coming near is something that we should be excited about, something that we should celebrate. Advent isn't all doom and gloom and repent and you've messed up and get ready. It's also a time to celebrate and rejoice, for God is near. We're getting ready for a party. And this is good news. In our first lesson today, uh, it's from First Thess or our second lesson is from First Thess Thessalonians. This is one of the very first Christian writings that we have. Uh, Jesus, of course, uh, died right around 30 CE, and this was written 20 years or so later. This is the first piece of Christian writing, first piece of writing from somebody who was following Jesus. And that makes a lot of sense, because if you think that Jesus is coming back real soon, you're not going to be bothering with writing things down or figuring out how to live for years and years to come. You think Jesus is coming now. So come 50 CE, it's been about 20 years since Jesus died and was resurrected. Where is he? He hasn't come back yet. So what do we do? How are we supposed to live if Jesus isn't here yet? That is precisely what they're talking about in 1 Thessalonians. And the, what he tells them is to rejoice always, to pray without ceasing, to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. That is how we are supposed to live in this in-between time. To rejoice always, to pray without ceasing, and to give thanks in all circumstances. This is not an easy platitude that says to ignore the bad things that are happening around you. This is something that says that even, and especially in the midst of painful times, rejoice, for God is with you. God is going to do something with this. God is active, even when we don't see it. This is a promise to trust and ground ourselves in a future hope, not our present circumstances. 
It's a call to rejoice always, even when things are hard. Because really, we're looking back to what they're saying in Isaiah. In the beginning of the Gospel of Luke, when Jesus first comes and begins his ministry, he reads, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because, he has sent, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus says that this is fulfilled in their hearing. This is what Jesus is coming to do, and this is the hope that we have. This is why we are to rejoice. This word from Isaiah is not speaking in a time when things are going well. It's speaking during a time of exile. The people have been cast out from their homeland, and pain and suffering is all around them. And it is there that we hear the good news. That God has come to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to claim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, the day of vengeance of our God, and to comfort all who mourn. To give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. God is coming, and God is replacing our mourning with rejoicing. Later on in the passage, they say, I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. We are covered in party clothes. God is inviting us to a party that is better and greater than anything we could ever know. I remember uh, I was a choir kid my whole life, right? So starting when I was about yay big, I would sing off key loudly in the choir every week. And I remember one of our favorite songs, we never performed it in church, but one of our favorite songs to sing goes a little something like this. Come to the party. Celebrate the Savior, come to the party, you'll never be the same. You don't have to worry, you have an invitation, you can come to the party in Jesus' name. And we would sing and dance and run around the choir room, and it's joyful, isn't it? It's joyful to be invited to this party, even in the midst of pain. In our Bible study this week, we were talking about the difference between hoping for something and expecting something. You can hope that you'll get an A on a test, but that's something different than expecting that you will get an A on a test, right? Expecting is a hope, but it's a hope that you know will come true, or at least that you trust will come true. There's some semblance of it's going to happen. There's an assurance there. And the good news is that we don't just hope that God will come back. We don't just hope that God will be here for us. We expect God to show up. We expect God to do as God has promised. To be here. To be present with us. To work through us. And we are called to rejoice in this expectation even if it hasn't been fulfilled the way we understand it yet. We are called to be people who expect to find God. When we look at our past, to expect to find God working even when we didn't notice it at the time. To look around us now and to expect to find God working today. And to look to the future and expect the fulfillment of the promises that we have been given. Because when we expect to find God present and active. We notice that God is. I posed a question to our Bible study group, um, and the question was, how is God here, active and moving in your life? 
And how is God here, active and moving, in the life of us here at Bethany? How is God here and active in your life? That is the biggest question I think I could ask, isn't it? But when you expect that there is a way that God is here and active in your life, you will become aware of it. Because the truth is, God is active in and through each and every one of us. In small moments, in big moments, in things that seem counterintuitive, God is present and active. And the key is that we are people who live in expectation and joy. We are called to rejoice and to get ready for Christ's coming, to celebrate the ways Christ came as a baby years and years and years ago in Bethlehem, to celebrate and expect the ways God is coming among us here today, and to celebrate and expect the ways that God will come in the future. So much of Advent is this stay awake and be ready, and this preparation and this repenting. And today is a reminder that all of this is not something that we need to fear, but something that we should be rejoicing in. Because God loves us, and God is here and active with us. God is here, acting and moving among us. May we be more expect expectant of this good news. May we find ways to expect God to show up for us. May we rejoice in what we notice God is doing and look for what God will do in the future. Because my goodness, is it going to be great. May we be brave and share this joy with all that we meet. In God's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We will continue by singing uh, My Soul Proclaims Your Greatness, which is, of course, the Magnificat, the rejoicing hymn that Mary says when she finds out that she is expecting our Savior, Jesus Christ. So we will continue with the hymn of, our, hymn of the day, My Soul Proclaims Your Greatness, hymn number 251. Please rise as you're able. <laughs>
creed as found on page 105. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the prayers. And expectation, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. Fill our mouths with laughter and our tongues with shouts of joy as we bear witness to the great things you have done. Give your church a spirit of gladness as we gather and as we are sent. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let the trees of the field sing your praise. Protect forests, orchards, rainforests, and all wooded areas from disease and deforestation. Keep us grateful for their gifts of oxygen, food, shade, and shelter. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You love justice and promise your favor to those who are oppressed, brokenhearted, and incarcerated. Grant wisdom and compassion to those who work for public safety and all who work within prisons, jails, and courts. That mercy may increase and violence wither away. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Give us strength to pray for our world without ceasing and provoke us toward love and good deeds for all who are in need. Especially we pray today for Phyllis Hess, Linda Patton, Melba Beckler, Erna Bauer, Stephen Moore, Mitchell D'Alessio, Judy Kohler, Diane Dreeby, Angelina Oretti, Kenny Flack, Teresa Peterson, Frank Sarcombe, Elsie Hoffman, Janet Ostrowski, Christine Burke, and the family and friends of Jim Cheney. Provide for all without adequate housing, food, employment, or access to health care. Empower us as helpers and advocates. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Open our hearts to those who serve as truth tellers in our church and in our society. Bless leaders in church and society in their task of proclamation. Amplify voices of peacemakers, <clears throat> advocates, and especially those whose voices are ignored or marginalized. Merciful God, with gratitude, we rejoice in the saints who witness to your life in all circumstances, in whom your spirit has not quenched even in death. Through them, teach us always to hold fast to what is good. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Listen to these and all our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. Please rise as you're able. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. I invite you to please be seated as we receive the offering.
Please rise. Take 
part in this feast which God has laid out before us. This is Christ's table, prepared for all people. With all of that, know that these words are for you. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Thanks be to God. Please rise. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Thank you. 